Oliver, Royal Bank of Scotland has just made a big settlement on the LIBOR scandal with uh, regulators in the US and here. It's a lot of money um, and it doesn't really bring the whole LIBOR saga to an end. No, it doesn't. There's still more settlements that we're waiting for. for from RBS's perspective, it's a, it's a £400 million fine to a combination of UK and US regulators. This is broadly what had been expected and it's quite notable today that the Royal Bank Scotland share price is more or less flat. And I suppose it does kind of raise the question again, you know, this is a state-owned institution. The taxpayer in the UK owns 84% of this bank. What to do with it? Right. So, so, you know, LIBOR puts one sort of scandal behind it, but there's lots of them out there. And, and it's a difficult thing for the government to handle. It is difficult. And uh, Vince Cable's been talking about it again today. He says that all options are on the table and that they're still sort of thinking about what to do with it. But, but remember, this, this has been going on for five years since it was taken into government's hands. And, I think there needs to start being a bit more clarity from the government about what exactly it is they're planning to do. Right, but where's the rush, I wonder, with selling it off? I mean, shouldn't the government just wait and wait and wait until it's sitting on a good profit and then sell? Well, they could do. The difficulty is, firstly, that it might not ever be sitting on a good profit. The, 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 there's no guarantee the shares will rise above the 500 odd p that, that's the sort of buying price for the government. And the rush, I think, is that it's difficult at the moment for the bank itself to be managed. It's very unclear exactly what its priorities ought to be, whether it should be following commercial priorities, which is what the minority shareholders would want, or whether it should be prioritising the government's agenda, which at the moment is very much lending to small businesses. And I think until there's some resolution of what the government's doing with its stake, that uncertainty is going to remain. Yeah, there is a lot of strategic uh, lack of clarity around, around RBS, and you know, there's no real sort of sense of communication between the bank and the government. I mean, they always seem to be at cross purposes. Um, that's really, I think, undermining RBS as a long-term asset. It is. I, I think it would be clear if one way or the other the government decided what it wanted to do, either nationalise it, which has been suggested by Lord Lawson, the former Chancellor, that mm. might cost, say, £9 billion, pounds, assuming a premium paid to the, the outside shareholders at the moment. But at least then the government would have free reign over exactly what it wants to do with the bank and what, it, what agenda it wants the banks to follow. Alternatively, it could start uh, selling its stake into the market, but I, I think it's quite important that the government moves away from this idea that it must sell at a profit. The government's very anchored in the past, anchored in this selling at a profit, and I think it needs to, to rethink that. I agree. I think that uh, um, UK taxpayers deserve a bit of clarity on RBS as well as a bit of maybe profit. Thanks, Oliver. <laughs>